In the heart of the Eastern Front, in the unforgiving winter of 1942, a city lay in ruins. Stalingrad is a name that will forever be etched in the annals of history as a place of unimaginable suffering and sacrifice. The fate of 300,000 German soldiers hung in the balance as the merciless Russian winter and encirclement tightened its icy grip. But in the darkest hour, a glimmer of hope emerged for the Sixth Army. A daring plan was hatched, a plan that would pit the brilliance of a German field marshal, Erich von Manstein, against the bitter cold of Mother Russia. It was Operation Winter Storm, a desperate bid to rescue the trapped Sixth Army. On the 19th of November 1942, the Red Army initiated Operation Uranus, launching an attack on the sides of the German 6th Army and encircling them within the city of Stalingrad. Concurrently, they applied pressure on the Romanian 3rd and 4th Armies, positioned to support the flanks, resulting in the swift collapse of the Romanian fronts. This strategic move rendered the German 6th Army completely encircled, a stark reversal of their roles from pursuer to the pursued. In defiance of requests to allow the 6th Army to break out of Stalingrad, Hitler instead commanded them to remain entrenched in what he referred to as Fortress Stalingrad. This seemed like an insurmountable challenge. The 6th Army was in dire need of supplies, and they were ill-prepared for the harsh winter conditions, as Stalingrad was initially expected to be a quick victory. The Soviet forces, on the other hand, had better supply lines and support. The Luftwaffe attempted to airlift provisions to the 6th Army but their efforts met with failure. As a result, the 6th Army's supply situation within Stalingrad deteriorated rapidly. Food rations were continuously reduced, and they were driven to the extreme of consuming the horses they had brought with them. Starving soldiers were unable to fight effectively, and attrition was significantly weakening their ranks. It became evident that if a rescue operation was to succeed, swift action was imperative, or there would be no one left to save. To address this critical situation, General Feldmarshal Erich von Manstein, a highly skilled tactician, was assigned to the Southern Russia Theater as the commander of Army Group Don. Hitler instructed Manstein to break the encirclement and rescue the beleaguered 6th Army. In pursuit of this goal, Hitler relocated the 6th Panzer Division, which had been stationed in France, to the Eastern Front. The 6th Panzer Division of the Wehrmacht played a role in Operation Typhoon during the winter of 1941-42. They were among the German units that advanced close to Moscow, but endured significant casualties in the process. Following the conclusion of the Battle of Moscow, they were withdrawn from the front lines and stationed in Bretagne, France, for recuperation and resupply. After approximately six months stationed in France, the 6th Panzer Division received winter gear and antifreeze, preparing for their return to the Eastern Front in early November. They embarked on their journey from southern France, traversing West Germany, passing through Berlin, and heading east. Their first encounter with snow occurred as they entered the Oder River region. Shortly thereafter, their train brought them to the vast Russian steppes. Upon arrival in southern Russia, they received word of the ongoing siege of Stalingrad. Every member of the 6th Panzer Division immediately assumed they would be called upon to participate in this critical battle. Similarly, the 6th Army had caught wind of the impending relief effort. Despite existing on meager rations and rapidly depleting supplies, they held their ground and fought with unwavering determination. The belief that Der Manstein kommt, Manstein is coming, served as their guiding beacon and motivation. General Oberst Hoth, under Manstein's command, was tasked with leading the 4th Panzer Army to create a corridor for the relief of the 6th Army. This operation was to be spearheaded by the LVII Panzer Corps and XXXX and 8th Panzer Corps with LVI's Panzer Corps serving as the primary force. Their mission was to break through the encircling Soviet positions around Stalingrad, starting from the southwestern town of Kotelnikovo. Elva's some Panzer Corps comprised a mixed unit, including the 6th Panzer Division, 23rd Panzer Division, and 15th Luftwaffe Field Division. After a six-month period of rest and rejuvenation in Western Europe, the 6th Panzer Division was reinvigorated and in high spirits. 
On December 3, 1942, they reached Kotelnikovo by train and disembarked. There, they confronted a Red Army Cavalry Corps with tank reinforcements. The 6th Panzer Division dealt a severe blow to this Soviet unit, forcing them to retreat from the battlefield, and then readied themselves for the upcoming operation. Operation Winter Storm experienced several delays due to late arrivals of reinforcements. However, time was running out for the besieged men in Stalingrad. On December 12, 1942, the 6th Panzer Division advanced, with the 23rd Panzer Division providing cover for their right flank. The expectation was that the 6th Army would fight their way towards them as they advanced. The Germans executed a surprise attack that caught the Soviets off guard. The initial elements of the 6th Panzer Division reached the Aksai River on the first day of the offensive and successfully crossed it on the following day. They continued their advance and reach at Verknikumskai before the dawn of December 13th. However, this is where their progress came to a standstill. At this location, they encountered significant concentrations of Soviet armored units and infantry. The Red Army had shifted these forces from Stalingrad to counter the German relief operation. The clash ensued between the 6th Panzer Division and the Red Army's 8th Cavalry Corps, 3rd Motorized Guards Cavalry Corps, and other units. On December 15th, a confrontation unfolded on the plains of Verknikumski, pitting 200 German tanks against 400 Red Army tanks. Initially, the 6th Panzer Division fought valiantly, under the command of Oberst von Hunersdorf, who led the 11th Panzer Group. However, in the face of the overwhelming numbers of Red Army tanks, their initial advantage became inconsequential. Both sides engaged in a prolonged battle that ultimately led to exhaustion, and eventually, both forces withdrew from combat. Up to this juncture, the LVII Panzer Corps had covered an impressive 60 kilometers within the first week of their daring offensive. The lion's share of this distance was devoured in the initial two days, but then they found themselves mired in a fierce struggle against the resolute Red Army defenders near Verknikumski. The situation appeared dire, casting a pall of uncertainty over the fate of the relief mission. Yet, salvation was on the horizon. Just in the nick of time, the 17th Panzer Division arrived on the battlefield. Following a grueling series of battles, the Hunersdorf Group, under Oberst von Hunersdorf's tenacious command, finally shattered the Red Army's unyielding defensive line on the 19th of December. They seized a bridgehead near the Mishkova River in a breathtaking raid. From this newly conquered vantage point, there remained no formidable barrier between them and the besieged city of Stalingrad. A mere 48 kilometers now separated the 57th Panzer Corps from the encircled 6th Army. An agreement had been made that when the relief units drew near enough, the 6th Army would receive the predetermined signal, Donnerschlag, Thunderclap, signaling the time to fight their way out of the encirclement. The stage was set for an epic climax to this dramatic struggle, and massive battles were set to ensue. Yet, a pressing dilemma loomed large. The Hunersdorf Group, positioned at the Mishkova River, consisted primarily of tank units, with a glaring shortage of infantry forces. Kampfgruppe Solenkopf, from the 114th Panzergrenadier Regiment, lagged 30 kilometers behind the Hunersdorf Group, engaged in its own struggle to break free. Meanwhile, the 23rd and 17th Panzer Divisions were fiercely battling along the flanks of the 6th Panzer Division. In essence, the Hunersdorf Group found themselves in a stalemate, unable to advance without vital reinforcements. However, being the initial German elements to reach this pivotal area, they were most likely to engage the Red Army in combat. As the days passed, the Hunersdorf group faced dwindling ammunition supplies and an ominous shortage of provisions. The situation grew increasingly dire. But then, a glimmer of hope emerged. In the afternoon on the 20th of December, Kampfgruppe Zollenkopf finally arrived and made contact with the beleaguered Hunersdorf group. It was a moment of immense relief and renewed determination. At this critical juncture, General Manstein and Friedrich von Paulus, the commander of the 6th Army, were in communication. They deliberated over the available options, with Manstein striving to secure Hitler's approval for a breakout. However, reaching Hitler proved elusive, and even when contact was made, his reluctance to endorse a breakout had been a recurring theme. The fate of the encircled 6th Army continued to hang in the balance, poised on the precipice of destiny. However, during this critical juncture the Red Army launched yet another offensive, 
this time on the Chir River front to the north. The 8th Italian Army, stationed there, promptly abandoned their positions and fled in haste. With the defense line now effectively non-existent, the Red Army surged into the rear of the Axis forces. In a cruel twist of fate, the Axis had lost their only window of opportunity to break out, rendezvous, and escape the encirclement of Stalingrad intact. The situation underwent a dramatic and disheartening transformation. The commander of Harris Gruppe Don issued a painful order. The 6th Panzer Division was to disengage and address the looming Soviet offensive from the north. It was a bitter acknowledgement that the Germans had effectively abandoned any hope of rescuing the 6th Army, still ensnared within the clutches of Stalingrad. On the 23rd of December, the 6th Panzer Division reluctantly abandoned their positions and began their march to the north, marking a somber chapter in the annals of the battle. The fate of the 6th Army had been sealed. Approaching them was not a friendly force, but a colossal and well-provisioned Soviet army. Then, on the 2nd of February 1943, having endured months of starvation and despair, the 6th Army was left with no choice but to surrender. Of the 330,000 Axis troops who had found themselves ensnared in the harrowing cauldron at the outset of Operation Uranus, more than 90,000 soldiers were led away into Soviet POW camps. Tragically, only a mere 5,000 would eventually find their way back home after the war. This marked a pivotal and sobering moment, a profound turning point in the annals of World War II, where the tides of destiny had irrevocably shifted. As we conclude this gripping journey through the annals of history, we invite you to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. How do you think the 6th Army might have been saved? What untold stories or perspectives do you have to share about Operation Winter Storm? Your insights and perspectives are invaluable to our community, so please, don't hesitate to engage in the discussion. We'd love to hear from you. For more exclusive content and behind-the-scenes glimpses, and to support the channel, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Your contributions help us continue bringing history to life. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes and a closer look at the historical photos and videos we explore. Thank you for all the support. See you guys soon.